Everybody, greetings from a galaxy far, far away. Um, we are here with Brady. Hi, Brady. Hey, Andrew. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm so excited for this stream. Uh, and hello, everyone tuning in from whatever galaxy you're in. Uh, there's some friends in chat. We've got Paco, of course. We've got Tyler, RB, Voodoo Val. General Kenobi is here. What a sweet, what a surprise, <laughs> right? Uh, get, get some all stars in there. Um, all right, Brady. Brady from Texture Labs, can you tell us a little bit about you, a little bit about Texture Labs? I know we're gonna look at some of your work as well. Um, sure. So let's take a look and talk about Texture Labs and tell us a little bit about that first. Yeah, Texture Labs, well, it's it's a website and a YouTube channel that kind of coexist. It's a, it's, it's, it's a project that I thought about doing for many, many years working as a designer. You have, you know, everybody's got their idea, like somebody should do this, somebody should, you know, make a chair with three legs or whatever. This website and this project was sort of my vision. And, and I finally buckled down and put it all together. It's basically a site with tons and tons and tons of primarily textures for, for, for designers, um, motion graphics designers. Uh, I felt like in my work, for so many years, I was pulling textures from like CG texture, a lot of stuff that was made for 3D models and things. And um, and I always felt like there was room for, for a site full of free resources of super high res, just grunges, half-tony things, distress, metallic foils, things that are a little irregular and natural, things that you use in Photoshop primarily, right? Photoshop or After Effects, uh, those are kind of my home applications. Uh, so I put together Texture Labs and then initially I thought, okay, to get the word out about this site, I'll make a tutorial or two to show like, hey, this is how I use stuff. And then the, the, the tutorials kind of took on a life of their own. And so the, the YouTube side of Texture Labs has become, you know, just as important a part of it. So, you know, at this point on the YouTube channel, I probably got, I don't know, maybe 40 videos or so, which doesn't sound like a whole lot for people that, you know, watch a lot of YouTube. Some, some, some people have what thousands of videos, but, but I try to like go the extra mile with all of them. I'll spend like a week on a three minute tutorial. So they just kind of, you know, punch get right there. down to business, punch yep. in there, really focus on, on a technique that I've spent a long time thinking about. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the program. Heck yeah. Uh, I was scrolling through these textures and as we're moving through, I was just transported to different areas. And I love looking at textures, especially for Photoshop. Like we've got the snow here. We're in Hoth. We're hanging out. We got the water hanging out in Nabu. Oh, yeah. We're over here <laughs> yeah. in the soil, hanging out in Tatooine, right? We can just yeah. create all these different places from our memories and imaginations. And it's so well organized. Like the, it's just, this is a great, fantastic resource for all of you out there looking for textures, looking for backgrounds, all that stuff. Uh, what a great, fantastic resource this is. Cool. And I should, and, and I've got to give a shout out to the Patreon folks who, who help keep the thing alive. That's it, because everything on here is free. Um, but you got to pay money to host all this stuff and yep. whatever. So, so the Patreon people help keep it alive and help kind of chime in with some ideas and things. And I want to say hello and thank you to them. Um, yeah, it's fun. Even as you surf through the site, looking at it, because it, it transports me to places where this is all stuff that I've shot. And, um, and I got super into dialing in my camera setup, shooting everything with this crazy Voigtlander macro lens so that I get these, you know, huge images that are razor sharp edge to edge. But as I see these, I'm like, oh yeah, that snow was in Minnesota. Oh yeah, that sand oh, was, in, so was in, cool. in Death Valley. And that was, and so it's sort of a hobby shooting this stuff too. And, and uh, yeah, it's fun. That's great. Uh, and thank you. Our moderator, Voodoo Val, has dropped that Patreon uh, link in there as well if you want to go check Sweet. it out uh, right and support on. Texture Labs. All right. So 
That's the Texture Lab side of things. You also have a side of things that you do incredible work. Do you want to flip over? Let's flip over to your screen. Yes. Uh, have you brag about yourself a little bit? I love bragging about you, but let's have you just <laughs> sell us full okay. on shameless self promotion. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, the, the, I've been working as a designer, I, uh, for a little over 20 years and primarily in the film industry. And for a long time, I called myself a motion graphics designer. So, so I'd have the sound off here. I can kind of scrub through some of my real, um, title sequences and movie trailer graphics are kind of the bread and butter. So this was now you see me too, ne lots of Netflix stuff, magic, Mike, uh, you know, it's all across the board. Some of this is title sequences. Some of it is is trailer graphics and then a couple of other projects that get peppered in. So for a long time, I would tell people I'm a motion graphics designer, but it, it's it, I've come to realize more and more that it's the it's the it's it's the it's the design part of it that is more important than the motion part of it from not I don't want to say more important, but it certainly is half of the puzzle. So you know, a lot of my time, a lot of what I do is just designing boards, is coming up with concepts, is sort of looking at different styles, trying to, you know, uh, explore looks before ever even going into After Effects. So I spend a I lot that. of time in, in Photoshop, a decent amount of time in Illustrator for type and things. And um, and a lot of the time, I'm just as proud of my boards as I am the final projects. And, and a lot of the time you're pitching things, you know, for every... I don't know, I'd say for every 10 things I design, maybe one will, you know, if that will finish and maybe and maybe one out of five of those will actually end up on a theater screen. So, yep, yep, okay. it's throwing, throwing the pasta at the wall and seeing what sticks. That's right, <laughs> so so, I've, so I pulled up kind of some of my boards. This is stuff that I haven't shown anybody yet because this, that wasn't out yet. And and again, this is stuff for the Batman that, that didn't finish, this was just, you know, we were pitching on it. A company called Deva had already done some incredible graphics that they were sort of committed to. And it was like, hey, you know, but I'm still proud of the, the work that we did. This I think is, I think I can show because I think it's in the theaters now. This is out now, yes, yeah. this came out, yes. Yeah, so this, these are some boards that were during the pitch. So, you know, I did sort of this Saul Bass kind of thing. And then you're always, especially in the trailer world, you're always looking at like, a variety of different approaches like what if this looks more like a spy movie what if this looks more kind of like a you know oh, that, that okay here was here's some things for for suicide squad um <laughs> and it, yeah uh and then here's some more stuff for suicide squad uh, so so um here's some shang chi uh you know just lots and lots of coming up with ideas looking at and then and then and then uh you know, a lot of the time my work will have to look more, this is drama. So there's, there's sort of like, you know, a whole variety of, of kind of styles that, that I feel like I need to work in. Yep. And even like world building, it's interesting to see that these sequences, you know, 30, 45, whatever seconds that you're having to build this world that this two hour movie is going to exist in, in uh -huh. that short amount of time and picking those styles so intentionally to like really build that world. It's really fun, you know, between, I think that doing title sequences is a little bit more prestigious, but I love trailer graphics because there are these like, there are these like micro design challenges and you, the pace of it is really fast. Too. Yep. It's like, okay, we want like, like give us seven looks for, for this thing, you know, by tomorrow at 11. And, um, and so a lot of, so, so the work in some ways, I think that has, has, has informed my approach, um, which, which is like, trying to arrive as fast as I possibly can, trying to have a lot of like tricks and tips and sort of approaches up my sleeve. And for people that watch the Texture Labs YouTube, it's like, you see that I just, I have like a hack for everything. Yep. Um, Which and, is what we're gonna be doing today a lot, right? We're gonna show yeah. them some hacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that's right. So today we are, of course, Star Wars week, and I'm super excited to be part of it. Sci-fi, sorry, sci-fi. Yes, Are inspired, sci inspired by Star Wars. Okay, <laughs> it is yeah, sci-fi inspired by Star Wars. That's yes, beautiful, yeah. though. Yeah. I'm because I'm a I'm a huge sci-fi fan across the board. So, so um, and Star Wars fan. Yes. So today and we 
Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna. I was gonna transition into what we're looking at today. Yeah. Tons of inspiration, specific style, and uh, yeah. Hop in. Tell us about it. The plan is to do some Star Wars inspired propaganda posters. So, so propaganda posters, kind of a vague term in a way, but but I think you know there's a legacy of these generally political posters from all over the world, and and um, and th to to me they they. And Andrew, you're you're a real expert on this because you have taught design and art history, so you can tell tell us about the specific years we're looking at. But but um, there's 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 a, kind of a specific aesthetic associated with these propaganda posters. Really incredible that you see a lot of um, contemporary artists borrow from. You know, this is where Shepard Fairey obviously gets a lot of his inspiration, yes. and and a lot of the street artists in a way. And, and and not just that, but I think a lot of just graphic design in general, like the 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 um, you know some of this this um, constructivist style. I think it's it was sort of like the birth of graphic design. You know, it really of, was. Yeah. So this is before we're talking about like mid nineteen fifteen twenties that zone. Uh, and we think a lot about, right, like Bauhaus, I think is the one that everyone in design school learns about Bauhaus. This mm -hmm. is pre-Bauhaus. Like Bauhaus was inspired by this movement. Um, and so it was very much inspired by architecture in the areas. Uh, it was inspired by kind of uh, trying to get an aggressive feeling in things and really keep stuff boiled down and symmetrical, kind of edited into what the simplest communicative message could be. And so this really is very early graphic design as far as like trends and styles go. Yeah. And for being so early, incredibly effective. You know, I mean, I, there's a reason why it took off and there's a reason why you see this style applied uh, all, all around the world from all these different, generally from governments, you know, because it works. It's yep. it's it's like it, you want to hammer home a message like what better way to do it than with these kind of bold, big, flat colors, dynamic compositions. You know, it's um it's awesome. Yep. And, and I'm dropping in chat a bunch of names because we don't have time to go into all of them today. So I just dropped in chat for y'all a couple names. And for those watching the replays, uh, some people to explore. The beggar staffs uh, were a couple designers that worked in this style during the time. Uh, we have the distigial style, which came immediately after this in graphic design history. Distigial was kind of the follow up to this. We have Cassandre, who worked in this style, uh, Alexander Rodchenko, who I think is actually on some of your mood boards, and then Anton Probably. Stankowski. Uh, those are some names for you to look up and research on your own time. Uh, but these are fantastic references as well. Uh, I just didn't want to get too deep into names, but yeah, yeah, cool. So, so, um, so the plan with the streams is to use this style to blast out the message to the rebels. And then maybe tomorrow we'll have the empire will respond with their message. Ooh, we're, we're taking kind of both to, sides. Yeah, we're gonna take both sides. And, um, and uh, you know, a lot of the, it's funny when you look through, I should mention, by the way, uh, obviously pulling reference is really fun. It's a great way to get into the zone on a project is just, looking at reference and kind of trying to dig as, as deep as you can, right? Looking at trying to get back to the original stuff. And I think almost all of these I pulled from eBay. Just a... What a genius idea. I've never thought about using eBay for like just finding the actual posters yeah, for reference. That's such a great idea. Propaganda poster, there's like 3000 of them. And, um, you know, some of them people shot really nice high res images of it. So, and that so, filters out the stuff that would be on Google that like students are making and posting on Pinterest. This yeah. is going to give you general, like very like authentic stuff for inspiration. That's amazing. I know it's hard too. When you, I was looking through this, I'm like, Ooh, I should, maybe I should order that one. But I mean, every, nobody's immune to that. Right. You start surfing through eBay and you just want to buy them. But, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, so we pulled a bunch of reference and a lot of these, you know, obviously I, I, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, right. some of the American ones, some of the messaging is kind of silly. It's like, it's like, don't forget to brush your teeth before you get on the battlefield or just, it's, it's, it's these like public service announcements, but, um, you know, we'll figure out as we go, what our message to the rebels will be primarily though, at least to get started, we're looking at 
the style, the treatment, the style, the style of the imagery to start with. We can kind of get into text as we go, but but um, you know, there's some variety here as you look through it. But there's a couple of things that I'm really interested in about the style, uh, particularly the you know the way that these images get obviously sort of minimized and turned into just two colors here or here we have uh the yellow the red and the black three colors that's a pretty awesome there's some great wow. colors going on in here yep. um i guess kind of a i don't know what you would call i i don't i don't think you could really call it a do it tone i'm not i don't i don't know what the official term is for things that have been like broken down into solid blocks of color yeah yeah i think um I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I actually think that it would technically be, and this is so specific, I think it's the placat still is what it's called. Um, and it's boiling things down to, yeah, the simple flat planes of color at kind of its highlights and values. Nice. Uh, and it was very popular, again, during this time uh, and immediately following this time, it kind of became the trend, mostly in advertising though, actually. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, let's let's get into some image. Let's see what we can do. Yes. Uh, and we'll be working in Photoshop today. We're going to be working in Photoshop. I may, if I jump into Illustrator, it'll just be to kind of scoot type around. Type. It's yep. such a quick cool. way to do it. But yeah, um, really Photoshop, even though this stuff looks really, really vectory, um, I'm a huge fan of trying to build these kinds of things in Photoshop. So I've yep. got some. Can you do me a favor and can you full screen uh, our bridge window? Oh, oh yeah, you got it. Magic. Look there at that. That was that was a Wizard of Oz moment. The like <laughs> full open up. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> okay, so so I pulled some images to work with from Adobe Stock, and you know we thought for the stream we talked about it a little bit. We thought well we could pull some stills from some movies, but you know because you guys don't well, you can't sell work to a client obviously where you've pulled some still from a movie we thought okay let's stick to like really using stock imagery and um and that limited the choices a little bit because we can't like we don't have han solo here or something but here is something i thought was kind of cool like is is that we can find some stock images of let's crack this one open of of like these star wars figurines right yes i, thought, oh, I saw these yeah, this would be a cool thing to start from because if you were a, uh, if you, oops, if you're a big Star Wars fan or sci fi or whatever it might be, you may have some of these things on your shelf. And what would be really cool is to shoot some of your own. Oh, yeah. You know, and then you kind of have your own imagery to start with. So, yep. and I, I almost think that like the, the lack of detail in some of these and the harder edges will actually lend itself to the style more than if they were <laughs> photos, know. right? I totally agree. I totally agree because uh, yeah, you you are like maybe cheating a little bit because you're bar because the, the, a designer has come in here and already simplified the forms a little bit, you know. And it's sometimes it's like this. It, it's that's almost like invisible design, right? Like you you don't even think about the fact that somebody has had to take a look at the Mandalorian and figure out, well, what can we, how much of this information do we really need and how much of it can we lose? So, uh, so obviously I'm getting started. The first thing I'm gonna do is clip this guy out, right? Let's get rid of the backgrounds. And um, I know it's not the funnest thing to watch, but it is kind of like, it's a good place to start. It's like a way to get to know somebody is like, how do they clip something out in Photoshop? You could, cause there's like 90 ways. There's so many ways. And I think, um, you know, everybody's pretty committed to theirs. And, and, uh, and my fa and I use a lot of the different ways, right? Like I actually, I really love some of the automatic tools like the select background ones and whatnot. But honestly, my favorite way to clip things out is just with the good old fashioned polygonal lasso tool. And uh, so, sometimes it's the muscle memory almost like jumps over the technology that like there's different technology there. They're probably faster. What? But it's like, nope, the muscle memory is already there. And that's just how it's going to go. Totally. Yeah. There's something kind of cathartic about it, too. Like you you uh, just sort of scooting, scooting around the edge of something. And in some ways, I think what's cool when you're using this tool is like you get to know the subject really well. You're going like I'm cruising around and there are things like this that I wouldn't have noticed. Like, OK, that's his boot and it's lost down here. Yep. 
and I don't know, I might not have noticed that if we weren't, you know, gently caressing the contours of, of the entire the contours of the pixels. Yeah, yes. that's right. That's right. And, 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 uh, also I kind of like, and I'm, I'm sort of doing it as sloppy as I think I can manage to. I don't mind that I'm not getting the edges just right. I was going to ask about that, that it is a little haphazard. And is that just because of the style we're working in? You know, you don't need clean lines. Yeah, that's a big part of it. It's also because I'm a little bit uh, impatient and um, <laughs> and so, I just, it's almost like a little bit of a challenge for me is like, how how minimal can I cut something out and have you really still, you know, not notice it? I think it, what's important to me is always just like cropping in a little bit. Yep. Rather than, you know, if I catch some of that fringe, it's going to it's going to call your attention. But if we don't get some of these ruffles in, in the sleeve, you're not going to notice that. Yep. Um, but yeah, agreed because the style has such a, like kind of a strong linear quality anyways, I think it's going to work well if we already build in some of these, you know, hard corners. Let's see how. Yep. And we talked about, uh, you talked about title sequences, a lot of title sequences. You mentioned Saul Bass. Uh, I think it's interesting because Again, design history, it just repeats itself and kind of evolves and adapts that even the Saul Bass work that we see that was, you know, in this 1970s, 1980s, way later, is kind of inspired by this constructivist style, very angular, totally. and it's an evolution of it, but still mm -hmm. inspired. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, so that'll work. And then I am, uh, you know, it took me a long time to get in the habit of smart objecting things. Oh, I'm still not there. Yep. Okay. Are so what's the benefit to smart objecting things? Well, we'll, we'll it, it'll work well with the way I'm going to approach this because I'm going to create a couple of variations of this guy. And, and, and with each one, I'm going to change the settings a little bit. Um, that's kind of the main thing. I, I, for a long time, I thought of smart objects as being as like, an excuse to be indecisive. It's like, mm, I don't know, you know, and it seemed like no way I want to commit to things as I go. Um, and, and, and then not go back and swap out the source later is that might be useful, but I, I, I think with, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll show you how that's going to come in really handy here. Um, I'm going to smart object it, scale it up a little bit. Let's see how big we are here. And this is what's called so, a non-destructive workflow for you that are watching. And that just means that as we work, we're not uh, changing the pixels, we're augmenting the pixels. And that way, if we need to change something, the source is still there um, and it's not destroying, like we're not taking a crayon to the paper. We're like putting plastic over it and then drawing on the plastic. Right. Uh, we're trying not to destroy the pixels. Yeah. So I've scaled this this thing up to be the height is about 3,500 pixels. Somewhere I find that like having an, an image somewhere in that 3,000-ish range sort of gives me the amount of detail that I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is is try to simplify this. There's, there's so much information here that we don't need. All of this noise, all this little the dusty specs and everything before before even really treating it, I want to simplify, simplify, simplify. Um, in fact, I kind of skipped a step. I'm going to tell you one thing that I almost always do right off of the top is use shadows, highlights, um, cranked oh. all the way up. It's just like, it's, I almost didn't mention it cause it's like muscle memory. It's like shadows and highlights, shadows and highlights. And, uh, I just find that it, 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 um, I don't actually know exactly how the math works on it's probably something with a high pass filter, but it brings out all the detail in the shadows. And, and I feel like when people are drawing or painting things, but you look at really anything, pencil drawings, all the best to classical paintings, the shadows are always, there's always an HDR kind of vibe to the shadows. It's like, we don't lose things in the shadows. So actually, once we get this applied, I can turn it on and off and show you how the shadows and highlights makes a difference. But Shadows and highlights, and then I want to get rid of all this noise. And the way I like to do that is with the camera raw filter, which has a lot of tools. Oh, wow. Here. It has a lot of tools, you know, that are already in your filter menu, like the kind of reduce noise and things. But I find this detail section, this noise reduction in the camera raw filter is so awesome. It's so fast. 
I've never thought about doing that. And it's basically doing what retouchers would do in like a frequency separation, which is like smoothing out skin and stuff. It's basically doing that without the million steps th to go through it. I know it's, it's, it's just like really good at it too. Uh, so I'm cranking noise reduction all the way up, detail all the way down, color noise reduction all the way up. And then I'm also gonna lose the color here and just make it, we just, we just want the dark and light values. So well, there we go. And as a matter of fact, I'm even gonna do it again. It turned it into just like a full on, like high quality 3D render. Like it, it yeah, really- that's kind of what we're looking for. Just smooth. It, yeah. Yeah, and if I do it, it's all, of the, we still have like a little bit of noisiness in here. And I'm just, I'm really, really pushing it. I don't mind that it's a little bit blurry, um, but yeah, it looks more like a smoothie kind of 3D render. So, okay, then next up. Uh, and with someone in chat, uh, Umicorn, there's a couple of people saying, wow, that was so easy. And then uh, our friend Umicorn says, I told you that Brady has a way to do things that always surprises you, which I'm, I'm excited <laughs> for this. Year. I've nice. heard like nine things already and we're like a half hour in. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Oil paint. I use oil paint a lot, not not for like an oil painting effect, but again, to kind of stylize the pixels and kind of finesse them and smooth everything together. And, and I, I use it in a lot of the Texture Lab stuff. And I consistently get emails from people going, I'm, I'm working in Photoshop CS5 and it doesn't have oil paint or whenever they started it. And it's and I have to write back and be like, I, I don't know what to tell you. I it's It's a pretty, it's unlike, almost any filter in the program that it seems to be one of the only things that can sort of uh, infer the directionality of lines and pixels and things. If that, I, don't, I don't know how else to describe it. Like it, 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 it actually tries to guess which way the lines and, and things are going. And then, so let's look at the difference. Oh, wow. That's going to go a long way when the next next is i think when it really starts to come together we're going to threshold it Ooh, oh okay. yeah Ooh, that's that's the sunrise over tatooine right there he's just standing on a sand hill tuscan raiders in the background he's just watching that sun glow <laughs> yeah yeah so it lot so in some ways i feel like this may be kind of what's going on under the hood when you're an illustrator and you do auto trace on things yep. is that it's trying to kind of run a few simplify it blur it and in fact in illustrator when you auto trace there's some settings like noise and how many pixels and it's probably kind of similar to what we did here of getting rid of the noise and camera off filter etc um and so you can see it does kind of you do end up with this kind of vectory look um, threshold, of course, uh, kind of a, I mean, you guys probably use it, right? It's, it's a pretty simple effect, but it just takes everything. It takes every pixel and, and it loses all the information and assigns it either black or white. Yep. Um, but let's check out really quick. Let me turn these. Here's how the threshold looks without any of those without any of those initial effects on it, the yep. camera Still filter. cool, a little it's too much cool. detail for if we're doing that kind of simplified area kind of style. Yeah, that's right. And this, I think it actually helps that this, like you mentioned, is an action figure. So it was already kind of simplified. If this was a person and you just use threshold, it can look really cool. It can look kind of like a photocopy, punk rock flyer kind of thing, but it doesn't look like a drawing or an illustration. So, yep. so it's kind of that, that, treatment before you threshold it that's really giving it a lot of style so cool. and seeing those uh those words stacked under there that's exactly what we're talking about when we're saying non-destructive you can actually see that those filters are just layers stacked on top of each other that are applying to that image uh, and so that's a great like visual representation of how it works to use those smart objects that's exactly right yeah and you can go in obviously like with the threshold or something and adjust them and change them up as you go which is kind of nice i just put a solid fill in the background so we don't have that checkerboard but so so uh let's look really quick at some of our reference and just get a sense of what we're aiming for here i love this image 
So, so the way this works and what we want to do is, is rather than just black and white, like we have on the Mandalorian, we want a few different levels of, of color kind of here. We'll shoot for this for four. So we've got black, red, yellow, and white. Yep. Maybe we'll do, I'm kind of digging the color scheme on this factory, the black, purple, yellow, and white. Let's try to do that. Oh, that's funny because I wouldn't have ever thought of the purple being a color there. Like I, I, in my brain, I'm just like, oh yeah, it's like a mid shadow. And you're like, oh no, that's like a deep, rich purple that's contrasting that yellow that then yeah. goes into that black. I love being able to like pull those individuals to steal a color scheme. That is cool. And yeah, purple and yellow complementary, right? Yep. Trying to pick, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so obviously Threshold just made it black and white. What I'm gonna do is create a few versions of this guy that where the threshold is in a different place. That's going to make a little bit more sense as we go. So actually, let me revisit this th threshold. We'll say this one is going to be just the black, the blackest blacks. Yep. And you can actually see for those watching on that threshold, how it has the kind of chart. It's mm -hmm. showing you where the blacks are, where the midtones are and where the whites are. And so if you're doing a kind of high light, mid light, low light, you can kind of just follow the grooves of that threshold uh, chart right there. Yeah, absolutely. So I called that one blacks. Let's duplicate it. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna delete the filter masks just because this is like a weird OCD habit I have is deleting masks that don't get used. Yes. I wish there was a setting in the program where it didn't automatically create. Maybe there is. If there is, let me know in chat. Disable where it doesn't, all masks. <laughs> yeah, where it doesn't worry you get you. Opt, it's like an opt in for the masks rather than opt out kind of a thing. Anyways, yes. uh, so I made a copy of it. Let's call this um, dark midtones. Wow, no uh, typos in there. I'm a, I'm a notorious. Oh, the stream is still early, sir. Okay, <laughs> yeah, have plenty no. of time for typos. <laughs> <laughs> Even on my own, I generally have to type things about four times before it comes out right. Uh, and then, let's see. Let's. I turned off the blacks for now. Here, let's um, adjust that threshold and just bring it up. So we're just picking up more, more, more shadows and then bring the opacity of this layer down to 50% and turn the blacks back on. So now we've got, now we've cool. got, a, yeah. And we can adjust that threshold and kind of figure out, okay, where do we want those secondary colors to live? Maybe something like that. Just those little kind of mid shadows. And it's really, that's really smart to change the opacity instead of the color, because then you can kind of see and pull back and forth how much you really want. Yeah. We'll copy it, go light midtones, and this one, bring the opacity back to 25%. Oh, so it's just a scale down of, yeah. it's mathematical. And then we get that, I guess it's the third color, but now we've got four. We've got the, the, the blacks, the dark mids, the light mids. And it's kind of nice because it, again, it, it does sort of have this like illustrator auto trace vibe, but you can control exactly where you want the threshold for each of these colors to be. So, so I mean, this is part of why I like doing this kind of thing in Photoshop is, is that, I don't know, once you, you can kind of dig into it and really customize it exactly like you want. Okay, so we've got so we got four colors here. Um, I'm gonna do one more now that we kind of have our thresholds. I'm gonna do one more thing to treat these even further. So on the blacks, I'm gonna use the. I'm here in the cutout filter. It was already queued up because I use it a lot. So cutouts is it? It tries to basically make all the lines straight. And it, and, it, and it it doesn't cut out a little funky when you're using a full color image. It sort of breaks things into these weird posterized blocks. But when it's working with just black and white, it does a really great job of, like it says, simplifying the edges, kind of fiddle around with it a little bit. But let's see, let's simplify that a little bit more. And for those of you watching, if you do want to research, so this look of kind of the cut paper, um, this was one directly inspired by constructivism, which we're working in today, 
but two evolved and was kind of transitioned into the next step of design by the beggar staffs who I put in chat before, uh, but designers, their names were the beggar staffs and they used literal cut paper and this same style. And it has a lot of those like straight lines. You can tell that it was cut and stacked on top of each other. Um, and so I love that even today, 2022, right? We're referencing and doing pretty much the same process with new technology. Yeah, I don't know the the beggar staff, she said. Yes. Cool. Nice. It's kind of a subtle difference, but there's something cool. Like you said, it sort of makes it look more like cut paper or something. Um, okay, so that so so that's kind of we've got our four tones. What I'm gonna do is group these and we'll call it Mando. This is Mandalorian, right? It's not Boba Fett. I, I, I am. You know, a Star I Wars really fan, want to tell you, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Chad, okay. this is where we need you. We need your help. Is this Boba Fett or is this the Mandalorian? I don't know the difference other than one is Pedro Pascal and one is not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so now I want to bring some color into this and I want to show you the, the way I like to do it where I can where I can vary but with one adjustment layer, I wanna target all four of these colors. It's the gradient map adjustment layer. I'm a huge, huge fan what of gradient map. What a great map. idea. So, you know, obviously gradient map kind of remaps your colors from dark to light and you can get really specific about where the location is. Um, in percentages. So let me Man, think of kind I, of how... I would have went in to do every layer, like a color overlay, had to deal with that. This is so smart. Uh, can you explain a little bit about how the gradient map is working with what we have already on the board? Yeah, what I need to actually first, let me kind of prepare what we have. Totally. So that it's ready for the gradient map. So, so if you think about these values from black being 0% to white being 100, I want to know exactly what these, I, I, what I want is for this to be zero, this to be 25%, this to be 75%, and this to be 100. So we do have to like think about kind of the math of the blending modes a little bit here. So we've got the blacks at 100. Now these darker mids were black and they're at 50% opacity. So that's going to give us 50% gray, right? Yes. Then we're gonna come in here. The lighter midtones are 25% opacity. So that will give us a 25% gray, but it's also making our 50% our, uh, here darker. 25, it makes it a 75%. <laughs> yeah, I'd, okay, I'd yes. have to, I need a piece of paper to figure that right? one out. Yeah. But, but what I'm gonna do is on this light midtones use blend if um i feel like it this it, it is getting a little complicated like keeping the math in mind here but make it so that it's invisible if the layer underneath is anything darker than you know the halfway point yep that's so interesting so blend if and i don't know if a lot of people use that uh but blend if is a layer style and it basically is saying if the value under this is X, Y, or Z, then blend it in. This is super helpful for mock-ups. If you have like a car that has a shine to it or a dark part, um, you can use blend if, and instead of masking, it will look like it just kind of blends into that image. Yeah, it's it's funny. I've been doing a lot of learning how to code in JavaScript and you use a lot of if statements. And, and I coding is, it's it hurts your brain a little bit. But it's it's it it actually like I'm I'm realizing now that there's this if statement in here and I, and and thinking I think a lot of people don't use blend if because if you're like me for a long time you're like I don't even know what that is yep. what is that and there there was no better way to name it because it is kind of like a, a it's it's like a concept um, <laughs> I love that there's no way to describe it. it's just like it's like a, it's an idea it's yeah a concept even, yeah even when you were describing you're like if the layer underneath then it will show through in any case what we've ended up with is that that lighter midtones one is now invisible when it's over the 50 percent. so now we actually should have one uh zero for black 25 75 oh my god zero 50 25 75, 75. yep 75 and 100 so if yes. we go into the gradient map 
and we give a value to the 50%, we can really, really spe specifically target that 50% mark. It'll basically, the gradient map is gonna, it's gonna remap, it's gonna, you know, take whatever is at the 50% mark and give it a new color here. Yep. Uh, and what do we say, purple and yellow? Let's give that sort of this purpley kind of color. And then this will be 75%. Man, this is so smart. Uh, and this is just a great example of there's no wrong way to design, there are just different ways. Uh, and just the ingenuity of this is blowing my mind because it makes sense, but it is very mathematical. It's very specific to you, um, but I'm learning a ton. I'm just, I, I love this stream. I'm, I'm excited to be a viewer here. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, it's, I feel like I, it's, I never really know like how, if I'm just being confusing by trying to explain the math about it. But I think once it, once it, you internalize it, you're like, oh, okay. When you just start thinking of pixels as, just values as like mathematical values. Like what's the, and, and, um, and that's, I, I love gradient math. Like when you really have a sense of like what the values are and what the numbers probably are, gradient map becomes even more useful because you can like really target things. Yep. It's, um, it's my favorite way to color things because it, it's like, it's so literal. You can, you can just rather than kind of guessing with different, you know, like some of the photo filters and things it literally is like what color do you want the whites to be what color do you want the mids to be and it, you just have this really like literal representation of it yep so okay well we've got our guy this Let's... is the mandalorian by the way the chat very emphatically in all caps reminded us that this is indeed the mandalorian <laughs> very good okay very good all right let's um let's take this guy and kind of start to make it into a poster um, Sounds good. I'm just going to kind of eyeball. I'm not really too worried about the exact. I mean, we're not, yeah, really, like we're not, yeah, we're not sending this to print or anything. Something like that ish. Uh, this is what I call a sure step. And that's when you're doing something and you just kind of go, sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's, that's the process is just sure. <laughs> There's a lot of that that happens. So, and, and I, I'm going to, we can kind of zip through that process. What I like to do, even though we sort of went beat by beat in building him is like, it's fairly simple to replicate that. And I've gotten kind of quick at it where I can just kind of pull in elements and give them the treatments and see how they look. Yep. Um, and in theory, could you copy and paste those onto the smart objects? Could you action them? Or is it better to be able to like, reference each specific step as you go you could do any of the above yeah i don't know it's it's that's always kind of a, a a tough call because sometimes if you just swap out the smart object it sometimes it works really well right out of the gate with all your settings as you had them and sometimes it looks all wrong but you don't know that if you went in there and switched the settings it would let's try it let's try it. let's take her let's, yeah let's, let's see what her. happens yeah as this is for this we've is... got another like hour at this yeah so we're, we're golden <laughs> yeah this is kind of a cool image, right? This is from Adobe Stock, and it's um, I don't know if it's ex like exactly period correct. I don't know if that I don't think you can get those shoelace kind of things on tattoo. This, yeah, the Star Wars corset. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but the pose is just right. It's I fantastic mean, it's, uh, yeah. for a poster. Yeah. So let's um, let's do this. Sometimes swapping out smart objects. So let's. What I'm going to do is copy this, then we'll go back. Okay, here's the thing about swapping them out that maybe I'm just maybe I'm missing a step too is if I is that if I duplicate this guy, if I duplicate this whole folder and then swap out the source, it'll swap out I don't know how to them. yeah, I don't know how to aim it where I can make a duplicate but with a new smart object. So I think what we in theory could do, and again, we don't have to get into trying things, oh, no, but I no, think no. what we could do is copy and paste the layer styles. If we paste the new image in, make it a smart object, we can copy and paste the layer style onto that object. Let's do that. Fingers there crossed. There you go. Yep. Where'd she go? I've got my, actually. My it own. really feels like sometimes it's a game of clue when we're doing these streams of like, okay, so we're gonna do Colonel Mustard in the library and see what happens. This looks like a really nice candidate for to let 
Photoshop do the work. Let's see if we select subject here. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Bravo. When the background is that, although look, it didn't consider that part of her name. It was like, this is a person, except for that except little that, spot. Except that one right there. There's maybe something's wrong right there. Yeah, maybe there's like a chip or something in there. It's kind of just like, hey, hey, it's that, a little sketchy right. area right here. Yeah. I like that. I like the smart mask just kind of popping here and um, make an adjustment to that selection. So, you know what? It didn't grab all of the lightsaber either uh, uh and let's see here someone in chat nathan saying wouldn't a smart object via copy work i don't think copying a smart object i think it is still linked to the original smart object and so if you change it it would update all of the smart objects which would be a problem yeah, what we I think what we could do is duplicate the smart object and then right click on it and say replace source or relay or something like that and on the and and then aim it to like a new file. Yep. That would be another way to do it. Uh how are we doing here? As a matter of fact, I'm I'm gonna not get because we lose the top of her lightsaber here, let's just not get that at all. That's right, because we can put just, it in after the fact pretty yeah, easily. Yeah. Because maybe we want some special effects on it or something. Anyways, what did I just do? Went into Smart Mask. Okay. Big bucks, no whammies. That looks pretty good. Big bucks, no whammies. Yes. <laughs> oh, what a fantastic reference. <laughs> but I am going to, sometimes that that's a pretty nice high contrast mask for this style i don't want any gray values at all i don't want any softness or anything i want yep. i want the mask to be i like this select and mask thing maybe not like crushed completely to black and white but super high contrast do you ever um do the contract selection after doing after like automatically yeah, to like get low, like rid of the little like white pixel extras on the edges sometimes. Yeah, if it left me with it, let's see if it, let's see how how that did. That that, that did pretty oh, it's well. Yeah. Premium content right there. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is smart object that, then we'll copy it, then paste it in here. Let's save this, by the way. Ah, that's uh 47 minutes chat we made it 47 minutes in <laughs> i at any time this happens i always just call it the timestamp because there are so many streams that will get an hour and a half in like we should save now uh, yeah. chat that is your one responsibility every single time <laughs> remind us to save please as we do major uh, updates yeah i'm sure everybody has had their forgot to save disasters it happens to me more often than i want to admit and then you just have to do the math. You up, I mean, a lot of the apps do a pretty good job of recovering something if you yep. if you crash, but sometimes it doesn't. And you got to you go into your finder and you look at the last modified time and you're like, "Ooh, that's a long time ago." That's yeah, but, but yeah. <laughs> we got some trouble. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's if we I'm gonna hold option, drag the smart filters on here. Hold on, you can click and drag them to copy them over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. man. Okay, I'm always like four clicks well. in trying to copy and paste. That looks like it did pretty well for it. So that's gonna be the blacks. And then I wonder if I wanna maybe I want to dark mids. Light mids. And as so we copy these over, uh I'm gonna do some shameless promotions for adobe live and just let you guys know there's a ton of people that just popped in hello wherever you're coming from uh if you're watching over on youtube we love you so much but you're in the wrong place uh come over to behance behance.net slash adobe live uh leave me a red heart emoji in the chat to let me know that you're coming over from youtube come join us over on behance that's where the cool people are um, and also, if you want more great content, there is a Photoshop challenge every morning uh, that teaches you a little bit about Photoshop uh, at 9 a.m. every morning uh, right here at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and if you want some Illustrator content, which we're not getting into this stream, you can watch right before this time at 11.30 uh, 
a.m. Pacific time. And then right after this stream, we've got XD content coming to you and video content at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. So check all those out. Tons of great resources for you to learn everything that you'd ever want to know. There we go. All right, so I copied those over. I put her in a new folder called Hero. And all right, now let's let's resave this as Hero. First. And that works really well, uh, being able to leverage the work that we did to just copy over. Like that would have taken us another 20 minutes and we did yeah. it in five seconds. <laughs> That's right. And again, like when we were talking about smart objects earlier, it's things like that. Just as much as going back and changing your mind, it's, it's, it's also about yeah being able to reapply things switch them up a little bit each time um in fact i'm looking at the vet the blacks seem like they're in a good spot for this one and someone in chat just said the funniest thing that i've seen in chat so far during sci-fi week uh they said if you're on youtube this is not the chat that you're looking for bravo <laughs> nice. bravo there you, go. there you go uh okay yeah i'd say that's looking pretty good um and do you still have one gradient map uh, will you have one gradient map over the entire image or will a gradient map be specific to each element? I think what I'm going to do is make it, maybe we'll make one gradient map for our hero and another one that goes over the whole background. Cool. That's kind of my thinking. So as a matter of fact, let's tie this one on to, but with using a clipping mask, we'll kind of connect it to that folder. It'll only apply to this folder. And we're holding Alt or Option and clicking in between those, right? That's right. It's a little hard to see with a white background. It's a little hard to see what that did. But let's say the background is red. Here, the gradient map is going to map, remap everything underneath it. With a clipping mask, it is kind of, as you can see, it just kind of sits a little backpack on top of this here. It'll only affect it this It's a backpack. That's such <laughs> yeah. a fantastic way to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. So let's 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 start to build out kind of a composition. Now, this is a little bit like this is the the challenging part is that these constructivist and propaganda it's the compositions are so are such a huge part of it. They're these really bold dynamic compositions and um you know, I think there's definitely some kind of continuing themes that we can pick up on, but some of this stuff is just experimentation. Um, but I really like what one thing that comes up a lot are are these places where the the artist has um, like swapped the the like has has uh, <laughs> how to put it into words is breaking the rules of of perspective where the yes. small things are in the front and the huge things are in the back and you get these weird, like, like, um, you know, really dynamic compositions that somehow your eye still knows how to put together. It's, it's like, yes, that it really is highlighting and kind of playing with perspective to make the important things more important and then have the non-important things just as kind of a texture because yeah, those people would be so tiny if that statue was actually the size. And yes, again, yeah. perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just this insane use of scale. And as a matter of fact, like I, I feel like this is a trick that to this day gets used all the time in movie posters. It's like the, like all those big hero movie posters that the, the little people are in the front, then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then Indiana Jones is, you know, in yep. the back over everyone. And yeah. Uh, so that's kind of a cool trick that we could pull on. Um, this kind of liking the uh, the motion that's happening there, and I like that yeah. it's motion that is geometric motion. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is kind of, and I I love the um, yeah the the sort of vertical energy in there is reminding me of maybe what what can happen with the lightsaber. Um, in fact, let's get. First of all, we don't want a red. Let's keep the background white for now. No, let's put let's put a gradient in the background. It's not gonna. Let's do something like that for now. Maybe we'll tilt it a little bit. And then I'm just gonna use a shape layer for the lightsaber. We'll try to get the scale right. 
And that's smart to look at what are the pieces that we need and what are the pieces that we can just add in to kind of like augment the original because we're using values. We can just plug in, oh, is it white? Is it black? Is it mid-tone? Let's just put in whatever shape we need. Yeah, yeah. Does that seem too long for a lightsaber? Uh, I mean, no. For, no. I mean, the original poster, right, had it going all the way through the roof, right? Did it? Okay. I think so. Done. Even if that's a little bit on the longer side, then hey, look, we can, you know, we don't have to follow any rules here, right? Uh, all right, so we've got that. Let's try, you know what I'm thinking is maybe maybe we try to do either an X-Wing or the Millennium Falcon that's like soaring straight up. Oh yeah. Um, Cause one thing I saw over and over again that I really love is rockets and planes and things soaring up into the sky. And uh, there were two things that I noticed about that. Obviously there's a lot of things soaring straight up, but it's these like these motion lines that are happening. I think are super, super cool. And I feel like I'm seeing that over and over again in here. Look at those. That is pretty sweet. Let's oh, try yeah. to do, let's go back to our stock images. So we've got, we've got a couple of X-Wings and we've got the Millennium Falcon. What should we do? What should we do? Oh, chat, let's, you let's let you decide. So do we want Millennium Falcon or do we want uh, X-Wings going in there? Let us know, chat, uh, what you want to see. They're on like a short little 20 second delay. So okay. they'll catch up to us eventually. Okay. Um, but are do you ever map out and sketch your compositions or do you usually kind of build as you go and kind of just feel where it's going? Um, generally, it depends on what, I, it depends on, you know, maybe like if it's a paid gig or not. Uh, if I'm, if I, I rarely do when I'm, when I'm just kind of messing around trying to bake something, then, um, yeah, I'll just kind of feel where it's going and, and, um, and it's okay if it doesn't work out. It's, um, if it's a, if, if I'm on the clock, then, uh, yeah, I probably spend some time up front looking at reference and my sketches are so rough. They're not for anyone to ever see. They're just mental notes. It's like, okay. So if, if this was, a a client project if 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 um if they were saying okay we need this this propaganda poster i'd probably sit down before even doing it and go okay we could do um we could do you know a thing i would just come up with a bunch of sketches like okay if you get a lightsaber and then there's two different things happening that are like in contrast on each side or we could do millennium falcons that are all coming out rating in front of the center or we could do i'd try to come up with like very quickly, as quickly as I can, just to kind of let my brain go, try to come up with maybe eight or 10 ideas and, yep. and, and a really quick pencil sketch just to remind myself of what they are. And then with a technique like we're looking at right now in Photoshop, I would try to just hammer through them. Like, okay, what's the, what's the, the easiest version of that and just see what works. Yep. Uh, and we, it looks like we want the X-Wing from chat. And I also think that's probably an easier answer because the blur on the Falcon would probably cause some struggles for us. And this would be much easier. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This looks like it's going to be a manual cut it out job. Like I wonder what yep. happened. We select the subject. No, not a chance, but this won't be too bad. Do we have any like Jeopardy music or anything that we could play? Well, I think that there actually is music happening in the background that's just like vibe chill beats. We can't oh, hear it on like Turn it up, man. But yeah, all right. Just boom, 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 boom. Uh, let's see. Chat, if you have any questions, let's go ahead and drop those questions in chat. Let us know. Um, we've got Brady here from Texture Lab. So drop questions in chat. We can do a little Q&A as we click through and do these lassos, um, which is just fascinating to watch. I think that I could watch live streams that's just like, ASMR of like put the mic <laughs> next to the mouse and just click me through. Like I would love that. I totally agree, man. Yeah. I wonder, okay, Paco's gonna hate this. Hold on. Let's see, let's see what happens if we actually do this. That felt that felt great. That hopefully <laughs> chat that came through. It came through in my ears. It was very ASMR clicking. So hopefully that gave you a nice little treat. Oh, and you're so lucky I have a mute button because I just coughed directly into my mic, but I caught it before. <laughs> a 
We're getting there. We're moving around the oh, uh, the stern. A great tip from our friend Voodoo Val. So Voodoo Val does a lot of the Photoshop challenges uh, and is just a huge Star Wars fan. Is saying uh, when you are creating lightsabers, be sure to remember that the lightsaber is actually white and the outside is what's glowing to show its color. Sometimes bright white can still look accurate if it's tinted, but usually you wanna go full white and then add the glow with your color. Now we're talking. That's we what I, 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 I tuned in a little bit ago before we got on here and Voodoo Val was on Adobe Live. And I was like, man, I don't have a helmet. Shit of that sweet helmet. I'm usually Nicely very done. much Nicely a costume played, person. Bell. Yes, bravo. I'm usually a costume person. And I was like scrambling to see if I had anything. And I was like, I could wear like a hoodie as like a Sith thing, but I don't have enough oh, I didn't Star think Wars that. stuff. I know. I actually, I, I went through the same mental exercise. I went, uh, cowboy hat, uh, beanie. Yeah, nothing. Yep. I, I wanted to open. So chat, imagine that this worked out and this was the greatest opening of all time. I wanted to open with a full tilt back chair, get my hood on and then be like, Andrew, rise. And then do like a full like lean up fog machine. Didn't happen. One of these days. Yeah. We'll imagine that it did. Chat's really good at this is all about creativity and imagination. Wow. That was the greatest intro ever. I can't believe we had fireworks. <laughs> Okay, so I didn't smart object this or anything yet because partly I want to fix that perspective and make it, hopefully we can make it pretty. And this is just a free transform, which I think uh, is yeah. a little different. You're just holding control basically to move around that perspective, right? That's right. Control, let me think. Contr I'm holding control when I hold the corners and then I'll sort of float them around by themselves or control, what am I holding? Sometimes these things. If I want to do perspective, muscle memory. And I'm holding command option shift. I'm doing that like the claw, right? Command option shift. Yep. <laughs> yeah. The claw hotkey. Uh, we do have a question from chat as we fix this perspective. Uh, our friend Bingo CS is saying, How long has Brady been in the industry doing motion graphics, design graphics? Uh, how long have you been in the industry? Uh, I would say officially since 2000. Four. I got out of school. I went to, to Otis College in LA and I got out of school in 2004. Prior to that, I, you know, I was the guy who would make posters for your band and t-shirts and like I've been doing that stuff since my brother got Photoshop on his computer in 1995. And he oh, went, yeah. check this, check it out, man. It's called Photoshop. And so, yeah, I, you know, I, I was super into it all through high school and everything, but but it wasn't until I got out of college that I got like a real job and um, and certainly before that didn't have anything that was ever, you know, like on a movie theater screen or whatever it was. So so 2004, I got started. I've been a, a I've I've worked on staff at a couple of places over the years, but I'm I, I like, you know, being a freelance guy. Yeah. Um, so I've almost always been freelance and then kind of ran my own shop in a way that's to say just me and one other person would take on you know maybe projects that were a little too big for us but pulled it off somehow uh let's see what happens you know i'm not going to do like that vectory treatment or anything on this um i just want a solid i just want like a solid shape maybe oh that's the way to do it. Yeah, I always put a gradient map on it that is just both black on both sides. <laughs> oh, okay. It's funny. Some of those the, like really, really simple things are things where there's not actually like a really obvious go-to solution. Yep. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. there's like sick. You could have done a color overlay. There's like a million yeah, ways to do it and everyone has their own. or whatever. I somehow find this command U shortcut to be so fast that I just use command U with a lightness. Yep. That's and that's kind of how I always do it. Uh, and then let's actually, let's... Let's see if we can just symmetrify this thing by. Oh, I love that. You you fix the perspective enough and then you just mirror it to make it perfect perspective. Yeah, where am I? Oh, I'm stuck up here in feather value. <laughs> That's oh. every every creative's moment of where am I? <laughs> What's <laughs> happening in this document? Turn on snap. I don't know, does that look? That looks a little I, funky though. I think I, maybe we should not do that. Yeah. Maybe it's okay that it looks like it's a perspective a little bit. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's put that there. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're pretty good on time. Oh, we're doing great on time. We've got another 50 minutes or so. Uh, okay. I think, yeah, yeah, we're doing just fine. Sweet. Okay, so we'll say that's kind of our X-wing shape. And then I want to do those, those momentum streaks behind it. And I have an idea of how to do that using... I'm going to create a new document, maybe like, um, what I'm going to do is use this filter render fibers. Oh, thing, right? what are fibers? I've used distance clouds, but not, oh, I don't yeah. really know what they are. I don't, it's funny that, that, you know, I think it's, I think this has been around since like really early in Photoshop. And it's funny to think that they would go, you know what people are really going to need fibers. Fibers. Yeah. Have you used the, there's one that renders trees and then there's one that renders, I think, fire as well. So I've tried it. I can't say that I've, I can't say it's I've ever like used it. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's chaotic. I, I use the picture frames one all the time though. No, yep. I, yeah. I think, yeah, you got trees. And the fire one's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so fibers, there's not a whole lot of options here. And they're too wide. And what I want is, I want fibers that are like super streaky like that. So I could either scale that down or what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is make the canvas ridiculously wide. Like we'll make the canvas super, super, super wide and then render some fibers again and then scale the canvas back down. Oh, that, man, the tricks, are, it's so specific, but it's so smart. So let's see what happens if we threshold this. Yep. It's closer. Maybe though. I wonder yeah. if you motion blurred it vertically, That's if it would like too. tighten anything up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, absolutely. I think I should do. I'm gonna double the size. I'm gonna double the size of this, just because that thresholding is gonna. It just looks chunky, you know. Okay, let's let's see what happens if we try to make a a canvas sixteen thousand pixels wide. Oh boy. Goodbye, Photoshop. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to squish it back down. Squish it back down. Wow. That actually worked. Look at those fibers. Yeah. And then we'll, like you said, let's motion blur it. That's cool. It's looking very rocket blaster. Mm hmm. You know what I'm going to do instead of threshold? And this is something that. I, th I think maybe, do you hear chickens clucking? Sorry, I should close I, my window. <laughs> no, I did. I was wondering what that was. I was like, there's no way it's a dog or a cat, but I didn't want to mention it. Okay, that makes sense no, that it's chickens. All right. That's chickens. I can only close it a certain amount because I plugged into the ethernet cable today to make sure it didn't drop out and the ethernet is coming in the window. So I've got it closed like that. But yes, I have chickens here um, and two sheep too. So luckily- the sheep aren't acting up, but it could happen at any time. If you hear sheep bleeding, I think it's called. I haven't been a sheep owner for too long. Yeah. Uh, it's not in your imagination. Um, there are sheep in the live stream today. So uh, what I was saying, I think we'll, we'll get more into this tomorrow, uh, which is not using threshold. I'm gonna use a solid color set to hard mix, which is pretty much the same as threshold and we can kind of get more into this as we go here's the cool thing so hard mix a solid value that has no color in it will act exactly the same as a threshold when it's set to hard mix but here's kind of the cool thing about using hard mix instead of a threshold is that we can bring the fill value down a tiny tiny bit and it'll kind of soften out that threshold with threshold there's not really any way you can soften it out right it's like you can turn the opacity down but that just turns the opacity down it doesn't actually like round off that it doesn't take care of all this crazy aliasing that's happening but hard mix it's like the magic blending mode i, I love using hard mix and I oh the values on that are so smooth yeah yeah you can get thresholds but you can get them with um 
looking a little bit a little bit smoother. So let me think. Uh, and uh, someone in chat is asking, are you using 50% gray on that color fill? Uh, we're using whatever value, right? I'm using gray, but then I'm sliding it down, just kind of just finding where I want it. So 50, if it was at 50% gray, then yeah, that would be exactly the same as a threshold right in the middle. Yep. But 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 bringing the value up and down is the same as as sliding that threshold slider lighter or darker. Um, hard mix is super super cool, and and. Uh, Andrew and I chatted a couple minutes uh, the other day, and we were talking about I'm I love like just kind of nerding out and digging into like the actual math of how the blending modes work. And um, I I actually last night late in bed and I was it finally clicked how how uh, screen blending mode works where I'm like oh I see it's 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 one minus a parentheses times b one minus b times negative one i'm like oh right it's multiply from the top down anyways oh that's interesting <laughs> yeah it's like yeah okay that makes yeah. sense for the math so if you if you don't know and you're watching and you're just like why are they talking about math so each of the blending modes that you're familiar with screen multiply divide like those are math right like multiply is actually multiplying actual values uh, and so when we're talking about this, it is all math. And once you start to understand that math, you can understand a little bit better about how the result is going to look because of that math. Check that out. So, so here, what I'm doing is, let's get a gradient. Underneath this hard mix, all I've done is just created a, a, a little bit of a gradient here so that the values lighten up at the top. Mm -hmm. And then we get this kind of streakiness that sort of fades out at the top. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's, Let's um, just make a command shift C. I'm going to make a merged copy of this. Oh, I always do command shift E and then copy that. You can do command shift C and it will merge and copy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It'll make a copy of anything that sees. I'm going to be so depressed by the end of these streams because I will have realized how much time I've wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then I'm gonna convert this to rather than white and black, I'm gonna do transparent and white. So the way I like to do that is again, using blend if, I'm gonna option slide the white out of there, then kind of flatten it by grouping it, merging it, and then doing that hue saturation thing again. Smart. I know that was like a little, so let's flip that. The streakies are looking kind of cool. That could even be something that you use to add like texture to a background, which we don't want in this because of the style we're doing. But if you want to add a little something to an area that looks like maybe it's too flat, this is a great technique. Yeah. In fact, if you if it was kind of sideways, it looks sort of like that comic book rain, right? Like those oh, yeah. rain streaks. Which would be great for Batman. Yeah. See what we do here. All right, we're getting some. It it feels Star Wars light speed blaster bat. It it feels like that texture. Yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. Let's let, let me just let's kind of dial in the mask a little bit here. Nope. I'll use a soft brush. And I don't know. I don't think I want any gray values though. That's kind of funky. What I'm going to do is, because I want like more of a jagged edge at the top of where they start. Yep. I'm going to take this, I'm going to make this gradient much bigger. Oh, wow. That might be all I need. It's just for the gradient to be bigger. Oh, interesting. Oh, because it probably softens that edge the more, the bigger the gradient is, which then makes more variation. Yeah, exactly. Merged copy. Let's try that again. This really, it's starting to feel like the tech desk of Adobe live streams and I love it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're giving you tips and tricks, but we're also breaking it down of how it works. That's looking kind of cool. Yeah. 
Okay. Let's crop that out. Let's just make a little copy of that section. Oh, that's, that's rad. There we go. That looks like the dust coming over the wing and kind of hitting the rivets and yeah. Yeah, well, it might be cool. There was something I noticed that I wanted to see if we could replicate in these posters. It was in that. The space one to the right there? Oh yeah. I don't remember where it is. It was a place where the, where the streaks kind of like knocked out the shit. They like knocked out the shape. So let me show you what I mean. If I, do you, do you use knockout layers at all? Please teach me. No, Okay. I am so ready. <laughs> I'm kind, of, uh, I'm kind of getting more and more into it. Like, let's say these two things are in a group together, the streaks and the X-wing. And I set the streaks layer to 0% fill opacity and knockout shallow. It, it, it makes, knockout means it'll take, it, it basically acts like a mask. The top layer will act like a mask. I'm going to use this all, I do so much like texturing on typography mm -hmm. and I'll always like do a gradient map, then pull the channels and then mask using the channels of what the values are. And this is exactly that, but like in one step, this is fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. You have to turn fill all the way down is kind of the counterintuitive thing, but it's a really great way to use things as masks without like having to paste them into a mask you, you don't lose the color value you don't lose you know it doesn't crop into your images on the outside of the frame um it's a little yep. bit of like a it's it kind of it's a little bit of a brain teaser figuring out how the knockout layers work but they are pretty sweet so i'm yep. using and it as a mask in the just so you know chat is losing their ever loving mind they, <laughs> chat is like full caps everyone's freaking out about that uh can you demonstrate that real quick one more time so that we can kind of see yeah yeah if we i'm looking at the time let's do let's do yeah let me um let me put it in a different comp so we can like look at it a little cool. bit more clearly. Where'd that? And let's just do it on like a piece of text. Okay. And as a matter of fact, I think that you guys might actually find this useful with textures. So let's do it with a texture. This is kind of like a little sidebar here. Yes. But um okay let's say uh something super grungy like this is from the texture labs website oh and that actually that it, what it is is when i painted this room black um and i was first rolling paint on the walls i stopped and went uh oh, oh get the camera i can like it just you know the paint roller That's just made like awesome. these really great patterns so Okay, so if I if I wanted to use this black and white as a mask, we just paste it into a mask channel, right? Or what I would first need to do is knockouts, they don't use black and white, they use transparent and non-transparent. Got it. So I so I need to convert this to being black and transparent or white and transparent. Actually it doesn't matter. It just needs transparency and not transparency. So yep. so I'm gonna convert it to and what we did there is basically say blend if, and we just made it so that like, hey, if it's white, completely blend it, which makes it see through. Yeah. So what I'm gonna actually, what I'm gonna do now, we just have this thing. It's just like red, or it's just red or pink and transparent. Now knockouts will. There's two options for knockouts, and they really only. Let's I'll, I'll put some other random stuff in the background just so you can see how the difference between them. If I, if I, if it, if I just put this layer to, to, um, to knock out, it doesn't do anything because, because what it's doing is, is making everything right behind it transparent, but you can't really see it because yep. it literally just, it won't really make it. So what you need to do is bring the fill down to zero. And then it's knocking out everything below it. So it's knocking out everything below it. And there's two settings for knockout, shallow and deep. Uh, and one of them, now it's a little, it's, it's a little funky because one of them 
only knocks out things that only uh, that are inside of a group together that's shallow if it's set to deep it'll knock things out all the way down to the background if you have a background layer at all so actually let's put these in a group together so this could be what you know what i kind of screwed it up because i i made that i should have reversed this like, inversed it yeah 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 let's do it i could do that super quick we would knock out the black boom 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 yeah, so that knockout was just the blend if tool and if i i don't think that there's enough uh blend if and val we're working on the next set of challenges right now we might need to do a blend if challenge because it is a, a fantastic tool i don't think enough people know about so uh blend if do some research val will probably be teaching you on it because uh we're gonna put it on the schedule so yeah <laughs> sorry <that's>... val <laughs> i'm volunteering you <laughs> So the difference between shallow and deep, so shallow is only knocking out whatever's in this group with it. Deep is knocking out everything all the way until we get to this background layer. So it was not, it was, it's a, it doesn't care that it's in a group together. So I'm generally, I, I almost always, when I use this, use it set to shallow in a group with something. Man, so basically, what a great tool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice because also what's cool is you can use, I mean, any layer can only have one mask, right? Yep. Well, with this, you can have multiple masks. You can, you know, you can use, so I could even have like, like, let's say we drag that in here. That's a little fun. I'm a little weird at dragging EPSs and stuff into Photoshop, but <laughs> this can also be in the folder and this can also be set to knockout. And now we have multiple masks. So, you, so you, can, you can layer up textures and layer up all kinds of different things you want to be used as masks. And um, that's going to completely change my workflow. That's incredible. It's pretty sweet. And, they, and also if things are like way off of the frame, you don't lose them. Whereas, you know, with masks, sometimes it like it crops. Yep. It crops oh, absolutely. Yep. That, that get out of the frame. So it kind of keeps your mask live. Okay. Yes, back. Okay, yes. thank you for the sidebar. <laughs> That's the YouTube clip right there. Yeah, clip it, post it. Uh, let's hop back into this poster. We've got about 20, 25-ish minutes left. So we do okay. have time to get something together. And then tomorrow, we'll, we'll probably chase sidebars, honestly. I was going to say tomorrow we can really focus. We're going to chase more sidebars tomorrow. But we're all learning. And that's the point here on Adobe Live. Yeah. So, so are we going to duplicate and do a couple of them? No, I don't think so. I okay. think this could just be like a solid graphic shape. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to stretch out one of these. So it goes all the way down. I, I always make uh, sound effects when I'm working in Photoshop and I'm just waiting for someone to write a plugin that has just sound effects for every single tool. Nice. So you're probably one of those people that make sound effects when you tell jokes, right? Oh, absolutely. Or, or tell stories. Like yep. there are people who do the sound effects and then there are people who don't. And I love the set sound effects. Like you're thinking about, yeah, you're creating a building experience. the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, chat, are any of you sound effects people? And if so, please drop sound effects in chat just because I think that's the funniest idea ever uh, for you to be typing in sound effects. So <laughs> run free in chat. <laughs> I'm kind of winging it a little bit. I figure a circle in the background. Like sometimes these just plain geometric shapes are, um, especially when you're watching the clock. Yep, exactly. And yeah. a little element can do a, a lot of work. And especially when you know what you're referencing, you can kind of get away with doing less for more uh, that adding that circle in the background is, you know, like, oh, it's Bauhaus inspired, working with a lot of geometry. It's inspired by architecture that even though it is a simple shape that like for us, we're just trying to save time, you can actually justify it and be like, yeah, no, it like works. Like it, it totally oh, yeah. works. Yeah. It's, 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 um, I don't know. I feel like half of art school and even half of uh, your entire career is just about learning how to sell things. Right. It's like, oh, yeah. Say, yeah. And sometimes you're really selling like it's something that you thought a long time about and you're passionate about. And sometimes you're just selling a, a story. Yep. The circle represents, well, obviously it's a planet. Yeah, exactly. If we yeah. put two circles, it could be the two suns of Tatooine. There we you can go. really put it on the specific place. It's oh, <laughs> easy. I'm, I'm doing that. Easy. So yeah. intentional at the decision that we've made here. <laughs> yeah. 
That's cool though. I like that. I like that idea though. Of that, a little bit of asymmetry with the second son of Tatooine. Yep. Sweet. And it's keeping it very constructivist to where it's abstract symmetry and angles that it's not balanced, but it is very angular. Mm hmm. I want to look at let's let's figure let's get some like a little bit of background ideas from our reference here oh yeah i know i saw some things that i thought were kind of cool also chat's dropping sound effects and it's just making me laugh and they're typing ah. out ooh ooh uh we've got uh tis pew pew there's lots of pew pews uh i do agree that that's a great <laughs> that's a great little sound effect a classic yes that's pretty cool. I like these gradient -y things. Oh, yes. Yes, the gradients. That is gorgeous. And if you're looking for more of those gradients, chat, uh, an artist by the name of Cassandre uh, was right after this era, did those in like pretty much every piece. Um, Boom. Yeah, that's how are we going to do that is the question. OK, I have an idea. So I already have this gradient in the background, but I'm thinking if I posterize it, I have a little zoom window I need to move here. Posterize it, it'll give us these big chunky gradients. Yep. And then bring the opacity down on that. It's not exactly the same. I think what was happening here is- Close enough. Yeah, they're going from light to dark, light to dark, light to dark. But I kind of, this is looking kind of cool. Yeah, that's looking super cool. I, I could hear you doing the designer thing as you drag that up and down going, ah. yeah, <laughs> there is, that's a real thing. And you, yeah, it doesn't matter how long you do this for. It's still so much like, yep. I mean, you're almost always in that spot. Just even sometimes until you, you know, send something out or post it or whatever. You're, okay. Oh yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Let's gradient, let's gradient map the backgrounds. Let's, let's do it, see what happens. Dial in. Okay, gradient map's a little weird. If your colors are in, if your colors are inverted in your palette, it creates like an inverted gradient map. Um, but let's see, maybe in here. And here with gradient map, we're not being like all mathematical about like the percentages it's mapping to. I'm just using it basically the same as like a hue saturation adjustment or something, just using it to introduce color. Yep. And this is all about the vibe again, just setting that world of mm -hmm. we were very specific and now it's about building it out, getting the right energy, the right vibe, the right story. Yeah, this big circle is kind of it's kind of bugging me and I just want to see if I can get it to work. I wonder if you drop it into the uh, yellow mid-tone color that we have. Yeah, okay, let's see. It may not be enough contrast, but it might work. Yeah, it would make sense too for the sun. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah, it's not wrong. Yeah. And I think having the streaks there does help separate like the arm that would bleed. Like there's enough separation that it it feels mm -hmm. right. I wonder if the streaks should be... That purple color? I was thinking that earlier. Or maybe like that, so they kind of knock out all the way. Yeah, back. I'm not mad about that, especially because yeah. it's kind of flying out of the atmosphere into space, that it's kind yeah. of hitting that turbulence. Yeah. Okay. And then I want to bring in like just some of this noisiness. It's feeling like it's on the right track, but it's so linear. It looks almost a little 80s-ish or something. Let's. I think maybe oh, we yeah. should just start to like grunge it up. Let's grunge it up. So, That's, I always tell people that I hide my mistakes with grunge and it just yeah. makes everything look intentional. Exactly. I'm going to make, first of all, a layer that is 50% gray and I'm going to add a little bit of noise into it. Go with like 10%. 
we'll just make it 25%. I can always dial it back. And then we'll set it to, let's say, overlay maybe. Oh, that's got some good texture to it. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. Under the gradient map, it's kind of cool too. Yeah. And then what if we put another, what if we kind of stack up some gradients? So let's do a radial gradient. Reverse that. Oh, yeah. And then bring the opacity of that down. Oh, that's those are cool stacks. Yeah, something in there. That's feeling a little bit more. I'm gonna I'm gonna blur this gradient so it looks a little bit more like I don't know those little ink specks or something rather than just straight up noise. That's looking cool. Yep. Okay. And then how about we give our hero sort of a little bit of a oh I already have it. Let's reset it to default. Let's give her like a glow, but like a noisy, a noisy glow. Yep. I'm going to set the blend mode to, so we'll just bring up the noise. And I Great. love that we are adapting the style, but breaking from it a little bit to keep like the future, like it's it's got those sci-fi glows, even though everything is very structured, we've got those nice like textures and glows to kind of reinvent it. Yeah, and I think, yeah, the noise is kind of helping to bridge that a little bit where yep. it's it makes it like a little bit lo-fi or something. Which is cool of trying to figure out what are the elements that make the reference the reference and then what are the elements that make my piece my piece and trying to find the middle ground of those. And mm -hmm. I think we found the middle ground very, very well. Maybe some glow. Nah, let's not glow that. Uh... I'm trying to think of maybe what's going on with the other sun. Yeah, we won't worry about that for now. Okay, what I'm, I'll show you something I do a lot that's maybe not so fun to see on a live stream is zoom way out on things. I do this, I actually, if, if we weren't streaming, I would have done this a hundred times already. When I think about something, I usually zoom way out on it. So I can just kind of see the composition, not get caught up in the details. And I'm like, okay see what's popping out and what's not. And I can't even tell you. I wonder, this is my thought and this is my unsolicited. We can throw it away or we can put it in. Uh, almost doing vertical type on that right there. Just some kind of type oh, yeah. to, to fill that space that maybe bleeds off both edges. It's kind of just a crop to kind of add an element of interest in the background there. I can see, I could see it. Let's do it. I, You know what I'm thinking is just even the asymmetry too that 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 might create i'm going to turn off our other sun if you don't mind for oh, now oh no goodbye um let's move let's move some stuff over and maybe we don't need to be so maybe we don't need to be centered oh oh yeah okay all right all right we're going and somewhere like you're saying maybe we'll do type up the side so in fact for the type let's do this just to be really quick in illustrator Oh boy, so I did the multi app workflow, baby. <laughs> and I'm not going to do anything that you couldn't do in Photoshop. I just find sometimes, especially when you're a little bit higher res, like type and moving it around can, can lag a little bit. Yep. Any Photoshop. time that I can work with type in Illustrator, I'm working with type in Illustrator. Yeah. So I just did that same thing. I just did Command Shift C to make a merged copy and then just pasted it into Illustrator. Okay, what I did, I saved us. Where, where was it? Okay, I saved us some of these because I thought they might come in handy. Some quotes. Oh. That we could use for our, our typography. I think we should save this is the way for tomorrow if we're going to be working with the Mando again. Yeah. Ooh, that, yes. That right? feels like the <laughs> perfect propaganda right there. Yeah. Maybe even just save the rebellion. Yep. Just, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, and so as we put this in again, I'm telling you more history because I have to, uh, the copy on propaganda posters is intended to appeal and be accessible by the lowest common denominator. 
And so good propaganda is designed not for the person that's going to analyze and understand and like try to figure out the art. It's made for the lowest common denominator, right? Somebody that like maybe can kind of read, somebody that like doesn't know anything about art that just kind of is going through their life. That's what propaganda is supposed to be designed for. And so I love that we picked the most simple message, the most to the point call to action, because that's what propaganda is supposed to be. Exactly. I second that. I kind of like these big chunky, let's see. Again, type is one of those things that um, you can kind of just sit and stare at it and think about it. All the I time. Had, I had an instructor at Otis who, um, who was brilliant. I loved him. And he would talk about typography. Everybody was, you know, it was very serious trying to dial in your typography. That was a big part of doing well. And he would say to people, he would go, he would go, huh, Mike, you know, the secret of typography. And, and Mike would go, uh, yeah. And then people go, what's the secret of typography? And he would go, oh, you don't know the secret of typography. It, it was like, what a power move. Yeah. And then he would just go, oh, Andrew, I could see knows the secret of type. It was like, and he would never say what it was. And it, and it, and it, it, um, and I finally came to realize like, oh, that does encapsulate it. There, yep. it it's like, you kind of know it when you see it, you know, it's something you get a feel for. You're never really done you know, dialing in your type skills. Okay, that's tangent. I got to stay on point here. We got uh, 20 minutes left. So we're, okay. oh, we're, doing, we're doing well. I did my math wrong last time. So we, we bought 10 minutes because I don't know how time works. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's great placement. Where was like a little bit of... Mm, no. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. That's kind of cool, huh? Let's try that. I like to copy things over. I almost wonder, this is not the right answer, but I'm going to say it. I almost wonder if it skewed to the angle of those gradients so that we got like Maybe another angle going through. Yeah. But I love, yeah, I love figuring those ideas to where you immediately are like, this is wrong, but let's try it. <laughs> yeah, but what we could do, we could always, that might be cool. Let's Ooh, just change I'm the not angle mad about of that. The, and we could just change the angle of those gradients. Which one was that? And that really has the visual line, I guess. I don't know how to describe it, to like bring you into the image, to really down to that hero. Yeah. Oh, I kind of like that better. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Space, right? Yep. And especially the angle of the arm with the cape, like it really feels like it's got that symmetry hitting there. Oh, yeah. We got to remember to make the lightsaber glow. That's on yes. our list. Yeah. Okay. So what if... Let's swap that. Let's swap that. Did I lock it? I did. Controller command two, command or control shift two to mm -hmm. unlock and lock, y'all. That just fell right into place. Damn, wow. I like it. That's that's the ultimate like satisfaction feeling as a designer is like eyeballing something and then it's exactly right. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you copy things over from Illustrator? I like to trace it, command shift O. I know that you can now bring live type in, right? With one you of the can, new you can bring live type in. I am unsure if it will carry over a skew on live type, yeah, uh, but yeah. I do know that you can bring it over. I like pasting it as a shape layer, which it- Oh, okay. You know, just cause I partly too, cause shape layers are so easy to change. You just double click and you can change yep. the color on them. Ooh, um, I love that underneath whatever gradient is happening. It gives it that like- <laughs> Yeah, I was just looking at that. I was just looking at that too. Okay. The atmosphere is fantastic on that. Nice. Is the that's so cool? And someone's saying that you could fill the sky with X wings. We could probably put another one in there. 
I t yeah, yeah, I agree. If they were all shooting up, let's just see if we we would need at least. Oh, the dimension of it being behind the streaks. Yeah, and also that kind of, you know, trying to play with a little bit of perspective and scale like we. Yep. Also, I love that. What if this one's behind? This whole thing was really like a masterclass in process because we both were kind of like, eh, uh, uh, until the last 20 minutes of the stream. And now it's like, cool, every change that we're making is amazing and groundbreaking and like pulling the piece <laughs> together that it's all about laying that foundation. And then yeah. you get to a point where like any change we make is just gonna make it better at this point. Yeah, and you know, that's not always the case too, right? It's, it's there are just as many files where you just sort of go, mm, let's start over again. <laughs> and I think, as everyone that comes on live stream, you sort of hope that you don't end up with one of those, but um, it's a real, it's a real thing. Let's get some some uh, some stars in here. I Ooh. did pull some. So I did pull. These are some some texture labs textures that I kind of zipped through and pulled things that I thought might be useful. And I do have some little simple little vector elements on the site, things that I just use over and over and over again. All this stuff is free, by the way. I don't want to use anything that you guys don't have free. access to. Free. Maybe that looks cool. Mm, no, I want just more like star stars. The specific art direction. It's a star, but we want like a star star. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm gonna. I just, I just, what I did was just group it and merged it. It's like my really quick muscle memory way of like flattening anything. Yep. It's just, it'll flatten blend ifs, it'll flatten layer styles, it'll flatten smart objects. It'll, it's just like dissolve, roll it up and yeah, dissolve totally, totally. Yeah, it's just command G, command E, boom. Yep. I, I work with dissolves a lot in that same style of like merging it down. And I thought it was a bug for a long time. And I'm like, I hope they never fix this. And then somebody mentioned it of like a, it working and I was like, okay, cool. It's a feature. Okay. I'm glad. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that it's a feature and not a bug. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's do the lightsaber before we forget. Cause oh yes. Yeah. So let's do the lightsaber. So yeah. We've got about uh, 10 minutes left. So perfect okay. lightsaber time. This already is feeling like something that I would see in a queue at Disneyland, like for a ride. Like it's starting to feel very- oh, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. The, yeah, <laughs> that's a really specific reference, but I know exactly what you mean. Right, like that is the art direction of this, like 100%. <laughs> that's, I, I hope that um, someday a client asks for that. Just make it look like it would be in the line at Disneyland. Yep. Okay, let's make sure, what do we have? I think I have, right now this is under, let's get it over that gradient, gradient. Map. Yep. Because like Val said, we want that to be white and we want the glow to have the color in it. Yep. I need to crank up the- And I know there's some kind of, in chat, you're gonna have to help me with this because y'all know about Star Wars. There's some kind of like, rule about colors of like whose is what and that's whatever. That's what I was gonna ask. Can yeah. she have a purple one? I know that's that's Samuel L. Jackson's. That's a like, yes. like, what's the story with the purple ones? Yeah, could she could she have the purple one chat? Let us know if you know about Star Wars, is there a rule against it being purple? Cause I think that it needs to be maybe for this. Yeah. It like looks so good, but if there is like, it's absolutely forbidden, let us know. <laughs> I'm gonna do, I'm looking at those X-wings and thinking maybe this one in the back could be like, that they don't all have to be white, maybe. Oh, interesting, even playing with some, uh, oh, there's a term for it, of when things get further back, they get more foggy or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just... It looks like our Star Wars expert has said, yes, she can have the purple lightsaber. That's good news. Okay, because we already, because it's we already, already got there. attached to it. Yep. Yeah, we where's my other X-Wing? Here's one. I think I promise I'm a little bit more organized when I'm 
Uh, it's under the sun somewhere. Is it? Yeah. Somewhere under the, the sun. Do you mean that? Like, uh, yep. yeah. Well, let me tell you, it's somewhere under the sun. Somewhere under the sun. Oh, atmospheric perspective. Thank you, Colby. Oh, that you is the term that I was looking for. Yeah. So then probably a good way to do that is just to sample. Oh, so smart. Right? Just sample that color. Yeah, that's so smart. Who needs opacities and values? You can just sample the color of the sky. And then that mid one is, needs to be, wait, so that needs to be lighter. That's the wrong thing. The coffee's wearing off. Okay, well, we're gonna get some education here on Star Wars because Val just put it on there. Okay. Uh, so Val is saying about the purple lightsaber. Uh, the reason that Mace Windu has a purple lightsaber, one, because Samuel L. Jackson wanted it, two, uh -huh. <laughs> because Mace Windu is a Jedi who uses a force technique that incorporates a little bit of the dark side called Vapad. Oh, uh, so he's got a little of the red and a little of the blue. That's cool, though. There's a logic to it, and that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, wow. that, that's really interesting that we have the blue for, the, I think there's Luke's, the red that is like Darth Vader's and Darth Maul's, and then you're a little bit of each and it makes purple. <laughs> she's like that too. I don't, that, with, yeah, maybe she's not the best candidate to save the rebellion then if she's a little bit uh, iffy well, on her allegiance. If she's using it for good, Mace Windu yeah. was the good guy and he, go. he had a little bit of both. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, um, let's pop some tech. Let's actually first, I'm gonna do something that sometimes it helps an image so much just to frame it in that I like I hesitate to even do it because it it's 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 uh I hesitate to do it too early because it just it's like oh now everything feels nice and cozy. What well, I'm gonna do a stroke do, inside, okay. I'm gonna do a stroke inside and then bring the fill to zero. So we just so we, it's just the stroke. Yep. just kind of cozies everything up a little bit there you go. this is now a print in the gift shop of the sign in the queue that's right <laughs> and then i'm also going to use a levels and i'm just going to lift the blacks and pull down the whites a little bit just because you know in the real world nothing is ever completely black black or yep. completely white white and we want this thing to look like maybe it's a little bit faded or something i would say it has the faded texture from our reference now yeah and i'm even gonna pull down let's maybe pull down the blue output channel and fade it a little bit like that cool and then we'll drop a little bit of texture in here from texture labs from what texture a great resource labs. Oh, I didn't grab the one. I didn't grab the one I wanted. So we're going to just kind of go behind the curtain for a second to my yes. library of where I keep everything. Do you have certain textures that are like in your brain that you can be like, oh, I need this specific one? Oh, totally. Totally. That's totally. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know the numbers of them, though. I'm not like, oh, what I need is grunge 237. Yep. But, but, but you know uh, exactly. Yeah, I, I yeah. for the longest time, my entire design career was based on like three textures that I found on some type, some site. And I'm like, those are the only three that I'm going to use for everything for the rest of my life. But I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially because you you know exactly how to dial it in. And, yep. and um, OK, I was looking for. And Val, for yes, someone did say Texture Labs, and that is the link. A hundred percent. Wow. What a convenient Weeks. a coincidence. Paper 128. I there use we go. it all the time. Screen mode. Pull it down a little bit. Oh, it also would be interesting, and this is a little bit advanced for uh, chat if you're not into Photoshop. Uh, it'd be also interesting to use a lot of your textures that are black and white as like displacement maps for stuff. Totally. There's a lot of good, yeah. like wiggly kind of zones in a lot of those textures. Yeah. Wow. Cool, something like that. Maybe we will, I don't know, should we, how are we on time? I can always uh, like- We've got seven-ish minutes left. Okay. Uh, well, let's say we've got five minutes left for me to talk about some stuff coming up left. So what do we got for five minutes? Do we want to add in another little thing? What do you got? Yeah, what what we'll do is, is um, pretty much always before I like export something or do like a final version on it is merge everything 
Command Option Shift E, right? The one you were yep. talking about. Merged, oh, and also or, sorry, merged copy. Chat has failed us. We need to save again. <laughs> oh snap! Yeah, <laughs> done. Thank you. All right, merged copy, and then you know when we get really in here, there's just like all kinds of detail that we don't really want. I like to just, I call it like, you know, a little bit of glue at the end, just sort of glue everything together by, first of all, usually adding a little bit of noise. Yeah. Like uh, maybe depending on, maybe just 3%, especially when it's big flat graphic things, it doesn't need much. Yep. Two, let's go 3%, then a little bit of Gaussian blur to kind of mush it together. I'm so excited that you're gonna do that. Cause I was gonna say, this is something I've started doing recently is a little bit of noise, a little bit of blur to just kind of mess everything up. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, is he gonna do it? And yeah, that's awesome. A little noise, a little blur. And then what I would like to imagine is that this came off of a camera. So like any camera, is not going to have a perfect lens. It's going to be a little soft in the lens, unless yep. you're unless you have my Voidlander macro lens, which um, which I had to exchange about nine lenses from B and H Photo before I found it. But but uh, so uh, any lens is going to blur things a little bit, and then pretty much any camera is going to give you a little bit of noise, and then pretty much any image is then going to get brought in and sharpened up to try to compensate for that noise and that blur. So sometimes I'll blur it and noise it and then run it through by sharpening it back up and, and denoising de it. it. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty subtle, but look at the difference. That is our original. Yep. And that's what I turned it into. It also means, and from far away, it, it just kind of tightens everything up a little yep. bit. Can we do the forward and after with this view? With this view, yeah, yeah. I don't even know at the at like the streaming resolution. It's probably oh yeah, not a big difference. difference. Not but a big you can difference. when it's zoomed in a hundred percent. It's very different. You can and you can when it's when yeah when we're not compressed down to like 1080 high or something when you're looking at it on your yeah. Retina screen or even you know even probably in in a, an Instagram post or whatever. Yep. Even in print, this would be a huge difference in print. It would be a huge difference in print, and it also. Something I kind of like about it is that it, it hides your work at the end, because I, I think without this, someone could probably look at it and go, okay, I see noise. I see a noise slider there. Okay, I see threshold here because I'm getting this aliasing. I see, you know, et cetera. I don't know, not that, that there's anything wrong with that, but you're kind of like leaving some tracks. Yep, it and, looks digital. Yeah, it looks digital. And I feel like doing that like kind of hides your tracks. It's like it's like you're backing away in the snow and like, you know, dusting everything. Yep. And this looks this looks painted. Like this looks like you cut paper and you put it together and you photographed it and you painted stuff on. Man, right. we did it. We did it. And it's crazy how that that came through in the last 20, 30 minutes of the stream. It really started to turn into something. Cool. Wow. Um, all right. So uh, we've got about three minutes left. Brady, thank you so much. Uh, where you, can man. people check you out? All that stuff. Shameless promotion on your side. Where can people follow and get all of the details? It, you know, really, it is just the Texture Labs YouTube channel is like, that's where I'm active there. And then there's always new stuff on texturelabs.org new textures. Sometimes I put up some posts. Sometimes I do rather than I'll just do like a blog post on like using gold foil textures or something, but it's those two things. I have an Instagram and uh, at texture labs. And I actually do, if you tag me or something, I try to get on there and look at them or read them, but I just have a hard time keeping up with it. But, um, it's a lot, it's a lot when you're doing YouTube website, shooting things, freelance or whatever. So at the, 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 the YouTube texture labs channel is kind of like my main jam. Yep, and there will be links uh, over there on the other side of Brady and chat. Um, there also should be maybe links in the description, question uh, mark, if you're watching this on the YouTube replay. Um, Brady, what are we gonna be doing tomorrow? Let's talk a little bit about that. We're gonna we're gonna dig a little bit deeper. There are, there's, there, um, I wanna get into to hard mix, which we touched on a little bit when we were doing those streaks um, because there are some really, really cool things we can do where um, today we were looking at just thresholding things, just making these hard lines. 
with hard mix, we can start to incorporate patterns into the threshold where we can sort of approximate those engraved looks. And so we'll do more propaganda, but we'll do it with a little bit more like this line work and, and um, yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. So with that, we're going to wind down here. Make sure that you stick around. There is an XD creative challenge coming up right after this um, at two o'clock uh, PM Pacific time. And if you want to hang out with us tomorrow morning, uh, again, nine o'clock AM, 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, <laughs> Val will put it in chat. Uh, there is going to be a Photoshop challenge uh, that we can hang out for that. So thanks for joining us on Adobe Live. We'll be back again tomorrow with more great content with our friend Brady. Uh, thanks, Brady. This was super fun. Talk to Thank you Thank you. Thank you, guys. And see you tomorrow. Bye.